Lucha Wars. This is a dice game with a lot of randomness, as it is common among dice games, and also with a really fun theme and with a dexterity element. Dexterity actually is most uh, is how mostly you, you make your decisions when the game is not just pure randomness. The game can be played by two, three, or four people that will be controlling individual luchadores or, or teams of luchadores. So, it's, uh, you can see that everything is pretty much tongue-in-cheek here, as you will see from the moves and from the characters themselves. The game will take place on this ring here that you will build and can also be turned upside down and you can play on the other side and that is the cage match which is still the basic game but with some other effects that make it uh, brutal, more brutal and more violent. And just to give you a sense of, of some of the some of the fighters that we have here, we have the Cthulhu cultists who learn Taekwondo for example the demonic lady, the Johnny, Johnny Flair, the evil clown, El Chupacabra, and Marta, the, I don't remember what her nickname is, but I know she, she, means, she clearly means business. And on the ring for the present game, we have La Santa Vengadora versus the Sultan. The Sultan of Swing. So each character has again a standee representing, well representing them of course, but other than that there isn't a lot of, I mean there, there are cases, there are situations where the standee matters, but it's mainly for flavor that you're gonna have them there. In this case, in this game, in any case, many of the rules are a bit vague and it works because this is not a game that you probably should take too seriously. It is about having fun and, and having a good laugh together. So it doesn't the game says that in in a, just in most cases the the fighters need to be in in the in the arena in the player, but it doesn't exactly say where they need to be or if you can move them where you can move them. And by moving them from time to time, there will be an effect on the dice that you're rolling there. And we just leave it to players to decide when and if they decide to move them. They, the standees are used for some specific procedures when you're going to use weapons. And we'll talk about those later. So each fighter has a, a personal player aid, a personal... Uh, uh, play it here that just looks like this with a track that represent how much life they have and when it goes down to zero the character is KO'd and the other and the other character wins. Also you have a token here that is how you're charging your special moves. Basically when the players attack each other and if you inflict a hit on the opponent or any number of hits. So if in that round you're the one hitting the opponent this token goes up, so you're charging your special moves and then later you can spend it by resetting this token and when you do so you can use any of the, any one of the icons at the level in which the token is or below. So that's the general idea. From there you can choose to spend that icon or that icon or that icon which is only using some variants or use that icon to um, uh, collect a weapon token or try to pin my opponent and there are two ways of winning again you KO your opponent or you pin your opponent down to a count of three each character also has a unique die that represents the signature moves and these dies are very different so for you, you see for example La Santa gives you icons on every side that means that you're always going to have an effect when you roll her dice, as opposed to Mr. Chupacabra has only two uh, effects and four blanks. Very unreliable, that monster, but these effects, if they hit, are very powerful. So different characters do have different play style. Each character, regardless of individual abilities, will use a pool of dice looking like these. And so suppose that this is for... Well, we're going to give the, the white, the holy light to La Santa. And the evil darkness of night to the Sultan of Swing. To the Sultan of Swing. And so you get a sense. This is what the Sultan's card says, if you want to pause if you want to pause and read that. So, 
When a round of combat starts, both players will shake their dice and will and will dump them in the in the ring at the same time. The way we do it, I've been playing with my kids that are now 10 and 11, and with my niece who is visiting and she's nine. And so two of us are actually playing, the other two players are counting. Three, two, one, go. And so when we roll the dice. We roll them in there and only the dice that are in the ring will count. If the dice, if the dice fall, that's it. They, they don't count anymore. Now, uh, if there are arrows, arrows uh, that are showing, the players with the arrows collect the dice and re-roll them. Again, the rules don't tell us exactly if you have to re-roll them at the same time. But since, but they do say that the point of re-rolling is also to try to hit the uh, the hits, the symbol, the hit symbols of the opponent, try to either change them or push them off the board. So the way we do it, we allow players to re-roll their their arrows one at a time with some with some aim. Doesn't mean I'm good at it. It means that I'm trying. Why was La Santa hitting her own dice? See, I mean that's just weird. And. And that's the kind of thing that may happen. So after, but again, there are stipulations that you will have to make because the rules are vague on so many uh, aspects. And I think, again, there's a good thing in a game of this kind. It kind of creates that, uh, that uh, co almost cooperative, uh, to an extent collaborative uh, feeling that although it's about bashing each other, finally, ultimately, the game is about having fun together and figuring out what is the most fun way of playing it rather than strategizing at all. So, after after uh, the rerolls, we count how many hits are there. If there is a tie, like in this case, both characters have two hits only, then all of the non-hit dice are removed and the other dice are rerolled. And But it may be, suppose, that after the initial roll or a reroll, one side has more hits than the opponent, like La Santa here is two, and the Sultan has one, then the side that has scored the most hits uh, gets to hit the opponent. The effect is they get to charge one step of their special moves and the opponent loses life equal to the difference between the dice, in this case, between the hits. In this case it was two versus one, two versus one, and so the Sultan loses one. And that's the idea. Uh, now La Santa has the opportunity of using the moves uh, that they charge that she charge, uh, but suppose she decides not to. And then that's the idea. Then we receive the we repeat the procedure. So this is the core of the game. This is the general idea. And this is also when in between rounds we allow players to move their dice, uh, to move their standees. But that's the general idea of rolling, counting the hits, or re rolling. What's available? And now one, two, three, four, five hits for Santa, four for the Sultan. And so the Sultan again takes a hit. And Santa gets to charge her ability. And suppose that she wants to roll her die, and then she resets that. So that's the general idea. A couple of other things. Uh, there are times where you will allow, you'll have the opportunity to roll in the combo die. The combo die has two punch or two hit icons on four sides and has two blank, sorry, one blank. Five hits and one blank. The idea is that you're going to roll and you see how many hits, which is going to be two or zero. If you have two, you can roll again, and so I roll again, and maybe I get another result like this. So now I'm at four. Basic, you can keep re-rolling until either you're happy with the result, and that's how many hits the opponent takes. So it's kind of like almost going on this like Wing Chun uh, chain punches, real quick bunch of bunch of real uh, quick punches. But when you do the combo, if you decide to keep going, and at any point you roll a blank, then you lose all of the all of the hits that you rolled and the opponent gets the combo die and they start rolling. Basically, you can keep going back and forth until one player does stop at some point and inflicts a number of hits on the opponent. 
So that's one, one thing to add to the basic idea that I showed you. And then we talked about weapons. So weapons, there are those tokens there. When you use your charged effect to collect a weapon, when you use your charged effect to collect a weapon, then you simply take one of those tokens. These tokens are hilarious, unreliable, some are very good effects, some are effects that is actually very hard to uh, to get anything out of because they are, in many of these effects, you effectively stop the game and you play a mini game, a dexterity mini game to see what happens at that point. Uh, everybody's favorite one of course is when you find the swing, I don't remember, the, the seesaw, I don't remember where, the, I don't need to. Uh, to find the token. Trust me, there is a seesaw, in which case you set up the seesaw and you place one of the characters there and basically the other character that should always be there for thematic purposes also because the rules tell you that uh, when you use the seesaw the character should be somewhere in the ring and basically then you have one chance of, of throwing this die or throwing the character die trying to push that guy out, your opponent out of the ring without hitting yourself. Like that. And the crowd goes wild. And there are just, there are just several games, so just several mini games like this, like there is another one in which you're trying to hit your opponent using your own character as a sort of a catapult, for example. Uh, and other things where you're trying to push grapple dice out of the ring by flicking them from here and I didn't do particularly well that time so that's that's one of the things uh, these are the basic things and you have game variants when you're playing attack team one character in a team will be outside of the ring waiting there to be tapped and the other character will be in there and the character trying to go out will roll a die to see if they can do it by going out you may also heal some life and gain some extra advantages. Um, there is the ladder match in which players are trying to climb the ladder because there is a big suitcase full of money on top. Again you had the cage match, you can play with three uh, fighters. So there are a lot of variants but the idea ultimately is there are these ridiculous looking characters in the ring. You're gonna roll a lot of dice, you're gonna use dexterity to do crazy stuff with them and this is in essence how you play Lucha Wars. Well what do you know I was so excited about to jump into the conclusions to tell you about how much fun I've had with this game that I forgot to tell you how the pin works. So when the health of an opponent is in the pinnable area of the track or below you can use your charged effect to, to try to pin them they take four uh, standard grapple dice and they roll them up to three times. They have three opportunities to roll a total of three dodges, which are the arrows, and or misses, which are the blanks. And three, and three tries, that means that as the player rolls, so everybody else goes like one, and then they roll again two, which contributes to that silly, fun, thematic uh, sense that you have here. The game is, is, oh, you also have solo play for those of us that want to play against the AI. You can, you can turn some of those into, uh, into AIs and you fight against three of them. Uh, I don't. I, when I haven't played the, the game with the, young, with, the, with the young people in my family, I played it solo. Yes, I played it solo and I played it two-handed, just controlling both fighters and playing both sides at the best of my abilities. Yes, it works that way also. Now... Uh, the game is fun. It's just simple, pure fun. I will talk about that. First, I'm going to complain about a little bit about some small things in the production. Uh, I, I, first, I, I read that this is the new edition of an earlier game, which I haven't played, so I won't be able to compare. It's just surprising. There are, there are typos here and there that one would imagine should have been caught. In any case, and even more so, if they are redeveloping a previous game and maybe, you know, they, they just starting from something that should have already been proofread to start with. Other little, another thing about the production is the box. So you don't usually hear me complain about the boxes, uh, but this box just, you can't possibly place the ring 
even the even the even the letter uh, doesn't fit back in there the box is very thin so you have to take everything down and then reassemble it every time that you play the game and that's just annoying also objectively some of those connections of the letter the they will start wearing out and they won't hold together after a couple of times and the game is just simple silly fun it'd be great to be able to oh well, look we have like you know 15 minutes in between games or at the end of the game night we just open the box the ring comes out assemble and we just play with this i just know realistically once it's taken down and put back in the box it won't come out as often as it would if it was assembled in the box just yeah, that's it now I've been playing it these days again, either solo or with uh, my with my niece who is nine, my kids who are ten and eleven, and we have been playing a lot of this. I'm filming this like early morning uh, because again we're visiting relatives. Uh, the day can be busy, and last night already told me, oh, tomorrow we gotta play. We gotta try to tag teams. We wanna play the the cage match, etc., etc., etc. We have been playing this a lot, everybody loves it, it's such a fun family activity. Now I don't know how you feel about, you know, playing with kids, uh, a game that is about fighting like this, but then you just remind them, it's not for real, it's all a spectacle. So, oh, okay, okay, it's just, you know, just about these crazy fun moves, it's all scripted. But I don't know that that's going to be a problem in many families. In my family, it's not a problem. Uh, and, you know, I've been playing a lot with them, and it's not like I'm like, oh, I'm being such a good dad and uncle just taking a bullet from the family sitting here to this activity that they enjoy and I don't I'm enjoying the heck out of it first because I win a lot uh yes so I'm happy when I win against a nine-year-old so what and then I'm I'm just happy because the situations are ridiculous matter of fact I give myself a, myself a handicap in using the weapon tokens a lot more often than they do. The, the young ones will use the their abilities to try to pin or most often to use the to use the, uh, the, 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 the signature die, the signature moves. It's because those weapons are completely unreliable and really, in a sense, again, you shouldn't play in this like, like you're playing Power Grid or Arc Nova with just the idea of maximizing a deep and complex strategy. Just go with the flow, have fun with it. So I choose those weapons because those mini games are ridiculous and it's fun to, to try to make them work when they really, really do. So, but again, you can choose the level of randomness that you have. The general idea is fun, is ridiculous. These characters are, are pretty adorable. And again, as I, as I mentioned several times already, the, the vagueness of the rules for once, that is not something that I am gonna, you know, complain about. I think it's really important actually that the rules in, in a game with this specific atmosphere, with this specific tone, then the rules are not so much about going and retrieving that fine point, but uh, let's agree that it's this way. Let's agree that it's that way. So again, that brings that level of, of cooperation to what otherwise is like, could be, I guess, could, could feel a bit mean. But again, my kids can be pretty competitive and they have had a lot of, of fun playing it even when they lost because the game is quick. It, it, it's ridiculous. It's fun. Uh, that little dexterity element brings some real jolts of excitement when you know you hit a die and the die of the opponent does fly off the ring or or there's gonna be still laughing and people going oh no when you hit your own die crazy stuff happens because there's a lot of randomness and again this is definitely a game that is not about the strategy but about having fun in a crazy silly random chaotic situation for this kind of game, Lucha Works works. Lucha Wars works very well. Definitely a very effective game. Ones that we have played a lot, and I know this is a game that we'll be playing in the future also.